In this video, I'm going to talk about the one sample t-test for the population mean. So the idea with this particular test is that there is some sort of population. And within that population, there is some sort of population mean, which I'm going to write as mu. And the idea with statistics or econometrics is that in practice, we don't have the entirety of the population's data. We only have a sample from that population. And what we frequently do is we use an estimator for the population mean in that particular sample. We often use the sample mean x bar as an estimator for the population mean mu. In the one sample t-test, what we'd actually like to do is we would like to test some sort of null hypothesis about the population mean mu. So our null hypothesis might be that mu is equal to some sort of value, mu naught. But because we don't actually have the population mean mu, we have to carry out that test on our estimated value of the population mean, which in the circumstance of having one sample is just a sample mean. Okay, so how can we go about testing this? Well, it turns out that we can actually form a t-statistic, which is equal to x bar minus mu naught, all divided through by s, where s is the standard deviation, strictly the sort of corrected standard deviation. And it turns out that under the null hypothesis being true, so under this null hypothesis here being true, this is distributed as a t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So it's just worth saying that the null hypothesis here is that mu equals uh, mu naught, and the alternative is just that mu does not equal mu naught. And in talking about s here, I said that we were going to use the corrected version of the standard deviation, of the sample standard deviation, which is defined as the square root of 1 over n minus 1 times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar, or squared. And the fact that we've got n minus 1 here is because of Bessel's correction. And if you don't quite understand that, then there are some other videos that I've put up which help explain this, hopefully. Okay, so what's the sort of intuition behind this particular t test up here, this particular t statistic? Well, it becomes obvious if you draw the t distribution. So if we imagine a t distribution, then we can draw on, and it looks quite similar to the normal distribution, except it generally has fatter tails than the normal distribution. So this might represent the t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And obviously we don't know what n is here, I'm just sort of doing this for uh, illustrative purposes. So the idea with this t-statistic is that if the top of our expression up here is significantly different, right? So there's a big difference between the sample mean and the value which we're testing against, and it's big enough relative to the standard deviation, which is the um, denominator, then that's going to result in us having a t-statistic which is either going to be really big, so we're going to be somewhere like this, so this might be the value of the t which we, we get if x bar is greater than mu naught, or we might get a value of t which is somewhere down here, so way it, that's in the circumstance that x bar is less than mu naught. So this distribution here, t with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, it's worth reiterating that this is the t-distribution, or this is the distribution of this t-statistic here, the sampling distribution of this t-statistic under the null hypothesis being true. But if we get a value of a t which is really high or really low, then it's probably really unlikely that this would have actually occurred given that the null hypothesis was true. So in those two circumstances, we would reject the null hypothesis. So the idea behind this t-statistic is that if there is significant difference between the sample mean and the value which you're testing against relative to the sample standard deviation, only then do you reject the null hypothesis.